And those are ignorant comments. Taking a deep breath get a little revved up sometimes. I share in potential offense, I guess, when somebody else is accused of abusing a machine, when I know darn well that happens when you're not abusing it. Put out a video recently about a, a Bobcat tractor that had some issues going on, some serious issues going on with it. And the point of that video was not about the Bobcat in general. Um, I mentioned that multiple times in the video, but you still get some folks that want to trash Bobcat. I think overall, Bobcat tractors are probably a really good tractor. Um, very similar, as most of you know, to Coyote, same parent company making these things, okay? So Coyote has a good reputation. Bobcat in general should have a good reputation for the product itself. And where the breakdown was at was the service side of things, all right? That's not a manufacturer, that's a dealership problem. If you don't have good technicians or good leadership at that dealership or, or group of dealerships, if it's a, a multi-location kind of setup, then that's where the issues come into play with a lot of this stuff. And, and it, you see this everywhere. You see this with John Deere, you see this with Kubota, you see this with, with Ford, you see this with Polaris, you see it outside of of the tractor world, but just in general right now, the last couple of years, since a lot of folks somehow don't need to work anymore, we've lost a lot of really good talent in the labor force. And that includes technicians that maybe had 20, 30, 40 years of experience and were the ones that used to show the, the young guys the tricks of the trade, right? How you actually get things done and how you do it efficiently and do it effectively and do it the right way. And then you started getting comments in this video with a general theme of, wow, this guy put 500 hours on his tractor in a year, give or take. He didn't have it for four months in time. It was a, a model year older. I mean, it could have technically been 15, 16 months old, depending on when a certain brand starts their new model year. You know, they don't always start on January 1st. Many of them start later in the previous year. They'll, you know, make it a, a branded a new model year, right? So. Just use a year for a ballpark, 500 hours. Started to get a lot of comments that said, boy, that guy, that tractor's not made to be used 500 hours in a year. And he must have been abusing it or overworking it. He got the wrong size machine, I can tell you that. And those are ignorant comments. And I can say that with a good deal of confidence, and I don't mean this to, um, well, it is, it's, a, it's a confrontational statement, I suppose, or an inflammatory statement, but Look at any tractor manufacturer's warranty language, all right? You're gonna have a residential warranty and a commercial warranty, and typically a commercial warranty is going to be shorter in term, okay? So that means maybe 24 months instead of 36 months or 12 months instead of 24, or it could be by hours, right? Maybe instead of 2,000 hours, it's 1,000 hours or 1,500 hours or whatever it is. Normally it's gonna be shorter. I mean, typically you're, you're doing heavier work if you're using it commercially. Uh, maybe doing landscaping is a really common thing for smaller tractors to do. But what's missing from this rationale is the fact that a, a tractor manufacturer doesn't have to put a commercial warranty in there at all, right? If they were not confident in their machine being used in a commercial application, then don't allow it, right? Just say there's no warranty if it's used commercially. Only have a residential warranty or a, you know, a general consumer warranty. I mean, some of our manufacturers for snow pushers and snow blowers, that kind of thing, same kinds of warranties. There's different ones that apply to residential homeowner use versus strictly commercial use. It's very short-sighted to say that he got the wrong size tractor or, oh, small tractors aren't made to be used commercially. Like Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever the heck it is, a lot of rental places use Kubota BXs as rental machines, all right, that are going to who knows how many different operators on a regular basis. You can't, you, you can never tell who's going to be on this machine next and what the heck they're going to do to it, right? So. These small machines, the little guys, can do commercial work. And 500 hours in a year versus 500 hours in 20 years, who cares to a tractor? The tractor does not give a rip. It's not like a person that if you go and run one mile a day for the next 500 days versus running 500 miles straight without stopping, a human, you're gonna be dead, right? A machine, you, you just keep going. I mean, you, you have generators, you have all sorts of engines that just go and go and go, and you stop for maintenance intervals and that kind of thing, but the machine doesn't care, right? It doesn't care if it's working eight hours a day, five days a week, you know, 2,060 hours a year, or sorry, 2,080 hours a year for a full-time schedule on an operator, or if it's just getting 50 hours a year by a homeowner who's mowing and, and plowing some snow a few times and maybe tilling his garden once a year. The point is, the machine doesn't know the time frame, it doesn't care about it. The machine is made to do work. In 500 hours, whether it's in 
a year or in 20 years is still just 500 hours on the tractor. And to say that it's being abused or it's not up, up to that kind of a task, well, maybe a big five series tractor, a four series tractor is too big for what he has to do. If he's trying to do landscaping jobs in residential yards, maybe down by lakes, whatever it is, that kind of a thing could be way too big and cause damage on a yard. You need a smaller versatile machine that can do that. And plenty of folks out there are using BX's, 1025's, maybe one size up to get those kinds of jobs done with their landscaping crews. And to clarify, there is a difference between use and abuse. Just because somebody is using something commercially does not mean that they're abusing it. And I would make a, a strong case, in fact, that especially if it's the same operator that's on there or maybe just a couple operators on that machine, they're gonna be way better at knowing how to use that machine, the limitations of it, compared to somebody who's only using their tractor 50 hours a year and is taking years to figure out how to maybe properly use a machine. So I'd give props to the guys that are putting a lot of time on it because they're gonna know what to do and maybe it's more likely that somebody who puts less time is causing abuse, even unintentionally. Anyway, taking a deep breath get a little revved up sometimes, but that kind of thing, that statement just irritates me. There was no information in the video that I, that I posted to indicate that he was abusing his machine. That was just an assumption that some folks out there make, acting like these are little fragile baby machines that can't be, that can't be worked, that can't be utilized to their fullest extent. And that irritates me. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden, we're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. You know, some other comments taking it further said that, well, you can't have those kinds of problems unless you're doing something. There's, there's more to the story here. You, it's obviously this owner was doing something to his machine. Well, I can, I can vouch for the fact that I've had so many pieces of equipment, right? And I don't put 500 hours a year on any of them. I don't, maybe with a, a rare exception, I put 100 hours a year on one piece of equipment because I've got a big variety. And the amount of things that go wrong with low hour equipment, none of my equipment has more than a few hundred hours on it. And the problems that I have that I didn't, I didn't do anything with, that just had, I had my John Deere zero turn mower, I just had it serviced, completely serviced, only had 200 hours on it. I'm mowing out here, just stops, just, just, the engine's running, but it just won't move anywhere. I, you, you move, nothing happens, right? One of the belts just decided to break. When it broke, it took out a fan as well at the same time. This kind of stuff just, did I abuse it? I didn't do it. I just had the stupid thing serviced, right? So this kind of stuff happens all the time. Axle leaks, hydraulic leak, our other skid steer corroded a line right through that. My last skid steer before that, salt damage from the previous owner. It had 150 hours on it and all the electrical system was corroded. This tractor, I bought this one. This is the highest hour one I have. I bought this one used. I think this one was abused. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Ranger, one of my kids' Rangers. Several issues with that one had ten, less than 10 hours on it, in and out of the service dealer all the time. Ford trucks, I've done videos dedicated to those. All sorts of issues of every kind imaginable. I mean, I don't, I don't abuse my stuff. I will work my equipment hard, but it's within the design parameters of what it's capable of doing. So I am very familiar with issues, and so I, I do take a bit of... Um, well, I share in potential offense, I guess, when somebody else is accused of abusing a machine, when I know darn well that happens when you're not abusing it. Anyway, that's enough of that. I needed to address that though, because a lot of folks out there that are shopping for tractors read these comments and put a lot of value in there. And while many, of most, the vast majority of comments that are out there and posts that are in threads and everything else, are worth listening to, you need to be able to know what to weed out. And sometimes you just gotta put your foot down and that's what I'm doing. I mean, the, there's use versus abuse. We've covered that topic too. But residential versus commercial, if a manufacturer did not think that their equipment could be used commercially, they would not warranty it. And they would put language 
excluding it from the warranty in there. So that right there tells you the confidence that the manufacturers have in their equipment. But on that note, we sell and ship tractor attachments all over the country. So if you need something for your front end loader, a grapple, a snow push, or pallet forks, some for the back end, a box blade, a rototiller, a brush hog, we'd love to help you out. Visit goodworkstractors.com. Includes free shipping to 36 states, rewards, and we have financing too. Get more information, more details on the website. If you enjoyed today's video and you want to see more, see what's going on around the homestead and the shop, hit that subscribe button right down below. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.